Uh, monumental revelations in the last 24 hours about Michael Flynn's involvement in the Trump administration as national security advisor and what we now know of as his definitive plans to eliminate Russian sanctions for what we are lo quickly learning could have been or clearly appear to be personally motivated reasons. What am I talking about? Well, a whistleblower has come forward and we know about this because Congressman Elijah Cummings of Maryland has gone public with what they've learned. Now indicted former Trump national security advisor Michael Flynn told a former business associate that uh, sanctions against Russia would be, quote, ripped up as one of the first actions of the Trump administration. And this is huge because, number one, it further con confirms what we increasingly already knew that the goal all along, even before the election of Donald Trump, was to as quickly as possible get rid of sanctions against Russia. But the even more stunning revelation is that Michael Flynn believed that ending the Russian sanctions would allow a, a business venture that he had been working on until June of 2016 that involved the building of nuclear power plants in the Middle East to happen if indeed Russian sanctions were ripped up, which suggests a personal financial motive for ripping up those sanctions. On January 20th, Inauguration Day, the first day of the Donald Trump presidency, the whistleblower in question says that Michael Flynn texted his former business partner and said that the nuclear power plant project was, quote, good to go. So this is even worse than we thought, right? The plan was not only to get rid of Russian sanctions with no regard for American interests with regard to those sanctions. It was to get rid of sanctions with no regard for American interests for the enrichment of Michael Flynn's cronies and presumably in some way of Michael Flynn himself. And what's even more amazing is that we appear to have pictures and video of Michael Flynn sending these texts. The report is that Michael Flynn was texting about this during the inauguration. And the picture that we have up on the screen has surfaced where you actually see in the inset in the upper left. Michael Flynn seemingly grinning and texting during the inauguration of Donald Trump. This whistleblower actually came forward uh, to Democrats back in June, but uh, special prosecutor Robert Mueller asked that they keep this private until his team could investigate further. And presumably they've done that since we're hearing about this at this time. I am once again stunned at the brazen nature of these communications, the paper trail around the Russian meeting in Trump Tower, which we'll get to later in the show, the texting from the inauguration on his phone by Michael Flynn. It's either stupidity or just this arrogance of believing that they'll never be caught or maybe some combination of the two. How is a national security advisor making these communications by text message. I mean, is he that dumb? And of course, the right will say, oh, there's no big deal because there's no connection between this, what Michael Flynn did and Donald Trump. And they couldn't be more wrong. A national security advisor doesn't unilaterally promise and talk about the ripping up of major sanctions against a foreign power if it's not part of the administration's plans. And the fact that Michael Flynn was so confident when he talked about the ripping up of these sanctions as an inevitability that tells us it was clearly discussed within the Trump administration. And sure, everyone might have had different reasons for wanting or planning for the elimination of these sanctions. Flynn maybe so that this nuclear power project could go forward. But the idea that Flynn was the only guy who knew about the Russia stuff and he was also the only one involved in the plan to rip up the sanctions is completely laughable. And we know it not to be true because we know that Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, was involved in the development of this easing of sanctions plan. And that's why this is huge in terms of the criminal avenues that it opens up. It opens up the possibility of conspiracy. If Flynn lied about his meetings with Russians because he was covering up an already planned quid pro quo of easing Russian sanctions, that is a new criminal path that could be extended to other administration officials. And the way in which this all went down makes me wonder about whether bribery was a component here as well. We don't know, but definitely another angle for Robert Mueller here. What will we know in three months, given what we're learning every day? Yeah, especially because I think this seems like the first clear example of a quid pro quo. I mean, with so much of what's going on in the Russia story, it just seems one sided, right? I mean, the Russian lawyer offered Donald Trump Jr. damaging information to Hillary Clinton. Mm. We don't know what they would exchange for in return, right? I mean, Paul Manafort, 
wanting to remove a pro-Ukrainian peace off the Republican platform. What would he get for that? We don't really know. Now we have two sides on this one. We, well, I think in the Trump Tower thing, we have two sides also. Yeah. Because it was clearly, I mean, you're talking about the Magnitsky stuff. That is, oh, right, that is yeah. indirectly, I mean, you're talking about Russian sanctions, but it's not as clear as this. This is a very, very clear and particular business agreement. So it, it's, for everybody who says there's no story here, Every day, we're not getting closer to wrapping it up and saying there was nothing to see. Every day, we're actually getting more and more information about how deep this went. And also, how is a nuclear power plant in the Middle East good for our national security in any way? Oh, yeah, no. That, it's, if you believe that the sanctions are wrong because they are unfair or whatever, you can make that case. But the idea that you're going to ignore the national security implications of the sanctions and say we have some kind of uh, country interest, national interest, in nuclear power in the Middle East, that is completely unintelligible. Uh, we'll see what we learn tomorrow. Uh, send me your thoughts. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman, and the show is on Twitter at David Pacman Show. Today's program sponsored in part by Movement Watches. I have been a, a wearer of Movement Watches now for uh, more than a year. I love the watch, and another thing that I love about it, not only the design, but also that the watches start at just 95 bucks and that the company is able to sell the watches starting at just $95 because they skip the retail markup. They eliminate the middleman by selling directly to you online. And they also started sort of like the David Pakman show. It was a couple of broke college kids who wanted cool watches, but would go to a department store and see watches with huge price tags. And they said, Hey, I think we can do better than this. And they've done really, really well. This particular time of year is good if you are looking to give a gift that someone will actually use rather than something they'll return or put directly into the trash, as I've seen done. Uh, these watches are a really great idea for men and women starting at 95 bucks. And you can save 15 percent plus get free shipping and free returns if and this is this is the biggest if of the entire thing. You go to MVMT.com slash Pacman. I'll spell it for you one more time. MVMT.com slash P-A-K-M-A-N, you'll save 15%, you'll get free shipping and free returns.